Being a new teacher can be really nerve-wracking, especially when you have a fear of public speaking. Uh, some might think, well, if you have that fear, how can you be a teacher? It is possible, because I definitely have plenty of fear when I'm presenting at conferences or anything along those lines. And even when I teach too, I can have some nerves as well. But I do have some tips to help you with any public speaking anxiety that you might have as a teacher. So here are my five tips. My first tip is to have a bullet point list of what you plan on doing on any given day. So go ahead and write this in your teaching journal because that should definitely be something you have. And I talked about this before, but I'll just link below a few videos and a blog post to you know, tell you more about that. But basically you wanna have just a short list that kind of helps guide you in case you have a moment of like, wait, what did I wanna say next? Uh, so for example, I might have, you know, my first bullet point would be, you know, announce homework for the day then remind them about this deadline and then you know remind them about this follow-up thing that they had last class period that i said i would research for them tell them what that information is and then okay now go over your lecture and your powerpoint and then ask these five questions in a discussion that you lead afterward right um, so very short kind of just a list of what do you plan on doing that day so that at any given point in time, if you're worried about like you forgot what was supposed to be happening on that day, you have a list, right? You don't need to panic. It's written down somewhere for you to see, okay? Um, along a similar vein, my second tip is to actually have visuals when you do any lecturing. Uh, so in my case, I create PowerPoints and so it's projected on the screen and so I'm just following along what I have in my slides. So I'm not reading from them, right? Um, unless there's like definition that I wanna kind of just read verbatim but I use it to guide me through it. So I'm not having to ad lib or come up with ideas of what I wanna say in lecture during the actual class period. I have it all visually presented for my students for them to be able to follow along, but also have it for me so any kind of worries I might have and any anxieties can be at least lessened by knowing that I just have to follow slide by slide until the end, okay? So you can take as much time as you need prepping this before the class period. All right, so that's my second tip is to use visuals as much as you can. Going along from that, lecturing shouldn't be all you do, right? So my classes are definitely discussion-based for the most part. I do very little lecturing. Um, so my third tip is actually, how much discussion can you include in your class design, okay? So if you have students do song group activities, then that's a lot, lot of time where you're not talking in front of the class, right? You're maybe walking around and helping them answer questions, or you're listening in to see what they're saying, right? But there's that bulk of time where you're the listener and you're the facilitator rather than the one who has to say all the words throughout that class period. Okay, so when you transition into a whole class discussion, for example, you know, again, students are the ones who are bringing up what points they want to talk about the most, okay? And so you can kind of rely on your students to help lead you through the class period. You can't do this completely, because at some point you do have to be the one in charge and the one that's leading things along. But still, this is a much less talking than having to lecture for 50 or 75 minutes every single day, you know, throughout the whole week. So consider how can you add discussion and other types of activities that don't require as much public speaking as just lecturing. My fourth tip actually isn't as related to teaching, so to speak, but it's about what you're wearing. Uh, so you wanna make sure you're confident and feel self-assured in the outfit you're wearing that day. Uh, so you know what's your teaching persona? Wear something that reflects that, okay? I dress pretty casually, but maybe you wanna dress more formally to give you that confidence of, you know what, I'm the one who's really facilitating the learning that's happening in this classroom and I'm dressed and I can feel confident in that manner, right? Um, you can also have a grounding item. So I usually wear a ring so that I can touch and move around when I'm feeling nervous or worried about something to kind of help me calm down. Uh, it was a ring given to me by my parents first and then actually a ring that I actually had custom made with the word balance on it as a reminder of, you know, deep breaths. It's all about balance. You, know, you can feel worried, but you can feel confident too. So that's kind of not related to teaching, so to speak, but I do think it's an important element to help you with your public speaking anxiety. And then finally, you know, this one can be hard to integrate into your teaching life, but I really think it's important. And that's being okay with saying, I don't know, right? So I feel like, you know, especially when I first started, I worried that a student would ask me a question that I didn't know the answer to, right? And that I would be caught as a fraud or as an imposter because I did not know the answer. So, but eventually I'm like, you know what? I'm not perfect, I'm not the you know, knowledgeable of everything in the universe related to my topic. So if a student asks me a question and I don't know the answer, I tell them that, 
you know, that's a great question. I'm actually not sure. Why don't we look it up right now, right? So if we had the time, I'll go on my computer, project the answer, the research that I'm doing, and we answer the question that the student has. If we don't have time for that, then I will say like, great question. I'm actually not sure. You know, I'm going to do some research on my own, and I'll let you know next class period. Thanks for asking that great question. And then we move on to the next one, right? So really, you know, showing your students, they don't have to be perfect because neither are you, right? No one here is perfect. So you got to really kind of learn how to feel okay with saying, I'm not sure of the answer to this question, or I'm not sure what should be done in this situation. Why don't we go do some research? I'll do some research on my own time and we'll figure it out together. All right. So keep it in mind that it's not about appearing like the expert, perfect, nothing can go wrong type of teacher. I think you can really help your students by showing them like we're all vulnerable here and we can all learn together. All right. So if any of these tips are helpful, please do click like below and letting me know. If you have your own tips for dealing with public speaking anxiety as a teacher, go ahead and comment below so that we can all kind of help each other out in this manner. All right. I'll see you next week with a new video.